Right, so what I'm doing today is I'm going to try a different watercolour technique to paint this rather beautiful Virginia creeper leaf. It's um, It's got a lot of pale yellows down here. It's a bit shiny and it goes blends out to red. So what I want to do is I'm going to try wet on wet. I don't normally work this way. But I'm going to give it a go today because I'm trying to come up with a good way of um, a good way of getting my class who I teach on a Monday night sometimes to be able to do autumn leaves. So what I what I'm doing here, I hope you can see, is I've drawn up the leaf in pencil. I use mechanical pencil, and now I'm just using very very dilute paint, putting this pale yellow over everything. I'm leaving the veins white for now. Um, this colour mix is Naples yellow mixed in with a little bit of cadmium yellow mixed in with a little bit of um, lemon yellow. So it's sort of it's a mixture. So I don't want it to have too much colour and I need to, as I'm plotting this in, I need to also bear in mind my lights and my dark. So I'm not going to colour it in just here because there's an area of, of highlight going on just up here. So I'm just going to plot this down. I'm only going to do a couple of sections just to see if it works really. Um, so what the, the aim here is to keep this paint very, very wet and then to add the colour into the wet paint so that it can bleed um, and thus blend in a more natural way than it might otherwise do. Normally the way I paint leaves is by applying things um, really much, much drier than this and just building up... Um, building up the darks first so I'm working back to front and much wetter than normal so heaven only knows what the outcome will be okay so let's just keep doing so I'm going to do just this section here I think so looking at the leaf I'm going to start with this kind of quite a pink color so again it's very dilute it's a mixture of cadmium orange and a lot of water a little bit of red as well so I'm going for the darks first if we if we go it doesn't matter if i go too dark on the outskirts of the leaves because they really are where the darkest darks are so if i start by doing my blending there oh i'm very frightened i'm so out of my comfort zone it's not the way i normally work okay so oh make sure the perimeter's nice and taking the color there's going to be some serious drying to be done here, I'm thinking. Okay, this comes in. And where's the... It remains yellow down. Oh, this whole top bit is actually quite kissed by this colour. So I'm going to carry it all the way down. I'm actually really interested to see how this is going to come out. Really fascinated. Okay. Uh, now then, here we go. So around here it gets a little bit paler. So let's see what we can do with that. Keeping it less paint on the brush around here. I wonder. Just a little bit down by the perimeters and the veins. Far less. So, okay, there, that's worked. That's worked more or less. So, without putting my hand on what I've already done, I've got to do the same over here. Ah. Okay, wow. Okay, I'm watching it blend in. Make sure it does more or less what you want it to do. Okay, and I need not to go too dark on this side of the leaf because it's not as dark red as it is on the... This this bit is darker than this side of the leaf. Okay, lift that up. And again, I'm taking a bit of the paint off the brush now because all along here in this area, it's a little bit paler, it's much more washed out, the orange. Keep those edges nice and firm. Don't want to compromise those, whatever else I do. So the edges are, do, are still nice and pink. Okay. okay. Okay, but before it dries, I'm coming in with my third mix, which is, you can see it on the brush perhaps, which is it's um, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, uh, just a, a much darker, brighter red. And while the paint's still wet, I'm going to take this all along the edges. See 
how it stands out or if it stands out if it works and once it's dry I'm going to go over these again but I just want that colour in there because it really is quite startling in real life okay pull that colour in there and it is really well, there's a lot of it all up here and even though I'm working wet can you see at the edges just like along the vein and stuff I'm trying to despite my best intentions trying to keep it really sharp old habits die hard I guess <laughs> okay that's fine that's doing what I need it to do need to not take this too far down because it is really very specific to these edges here and at the very top then it's really really dark and I'm not scared to make it even darker because it really is quite a dramatic contrast up there Okay, and up at this tip here as well, we've got some serious red stuff going on. Now, what I love about autumn leaves, there's a lot of things I love about autumn leaves. What I love about autumn leaves is um, the fact that all these colours, these amazing colours that we stand in total awe of and adore, they're there all year round. The only reason we can't see them all year round is because they're masked by the green of the chlorophyll and what happens is when winter comes and fall or autumn wherever depending on where you're from comes in then what happens is that the chlorophyll gets pulled back into the plant from the leaves to conserve energy and um yep yeah, and you can see all these other colors which have served the plant so well through the whole year so they're always there it's just we only see them time to time gosh isn't that weird how differently the paint is behaving according to the nature of the um according to the nature of the of the of the wetness of the different bits of paint i'm going to suck a little bit of extra paint off here and here in fact i don't want to compromise anything but i just don't want it to be too wet one of the things i love about working wet is the lines at the edge of the watercolor as it dries it's something very very satisfying it's a very crisp line it gives me enormous satisfaction Okay, so while this side was drying, I did the same technique to this side. But what's interesting is this side is more or less dry, so I'll be able to work into it pretty soon. But look at the difference. If you could, if once you once you've done a watercolor like this, if if the watercolor retained that glow and that vibrancy, life would be so much easier. But it doesn't. As it dries, even though it does lovely things like leaving these crisp edges, it just loses so much of the vibrancy and becomes washed out. What I want to do is get some of the darker darks in. So I've mixed up a much, much thicker, um, a much, much thicker paint, which is a alizarin crimson and cadmium red. And I'm going to paint now as if, as if I had, you know, as, as if I was doing it normally. So painting quite thick and looking initially for the darkest darks. I'm hoping that having done the underlayers, this will just speed this part of the process up. So we'll get to a result that I'm happy with that much faster. So this is just going right on the edges because that's where my darkest my darkest reds are right now. Okay. I don't want to go too dark too fast. That's always the risk. I always say that, but it's true. And it does come down here, but much, much more moderated. And it's quite, quite significant up there at the top. That darker red seems to cling to the mid rib and to the very edges. So I'm going in with my darkest darks there. Uh, it does get a little, it gets a little lighter down here, but I quite like, quite like the depth of the colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use slenderer lines I do like that distinction there they're really just a very light touch coming down here it's barely there literally a hairline 
of that same dark red colour. All the way down to the bottom of that vein. And then... Where's my next bit of dark dark? Here we go. There's a bit of dark dark just there. Plop that in. Let's be where that cast shadow. Of course the light has totally changed since the um since the paint's dried. <coughs> we now the sun has set and it's becoming gloomier. You know, honestly. Uh okay. And again here on this side. Definitely this tip is nice and dark red. It's quite dramatic. Okay, right, so now I'm going to mix up a slightly less violent red. A uh, bit pinker. This one's got um, this one's got much more cadmium red in it, actually. And again, it's equally the same sort of consistency as the one I was just using. So now I'm going into the mid-tone, so all along here. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I leave the central area, in these cases, untouched because I don't want to swallow up all the areas of light. But this whole, this whole area up here, all of this is very, um, it's very dark red. It's beautiful. So we do want to reflect that. Let's just make sure we leave bits of... Payola, which again will knock back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot these in almost as perimeter marks and then I'm going to come in and water them down in just a second or two. So if I did a whole of the tip, then I'll have a whole lot to come swerving back at and to try and sort out. I need to cut into some of these veins as well. Uh, what's happening down here? Yep, we're still nice and red. Yep. A bit less down here, I wonder. We'll take that down there and then we'll start to lighten up a bit with this mid-red. brush into the watery bit. I didn't want to do that. Okay, swallow up some more of these veins so that they're not too prominent but still present. That's what we're looking for. And there's redder down here. Definitely redder all down here by the midrib. Uh, what's happening here is lightening up, not so much. Okay. Bit careful around here. That edge bit still, it's not as red, so I'm going to just keep that limited to the outside edge. This bit here, it gets a bit red again. We can stop being so nervous. Okay, so now what I, I said I was going to use a more dilute on top, so that's what this is. This is same colour, but just with a little bit more water in. Again, working round the edges, leaving the central areas more or less. Don't go too dark. It's a contrast that makes it beautiful. Okay, so that bit's doing all that. And we'll we'll knock that back later. Okay. So now come along here. These bits are still very red, even though we're on the side veins and into a much paler area. But right round the veins is still quite dramatic and bright. Lock that in. And the 
time looking at that leaf trying to figure out what it's telling me about the lights and the darks. And redrawing with the brush. If as you look you realise you've messed something up, don't um don't assume that your drawing is, is right, it could easily be wrong. So use the opportunity to come back in with a brush and do it again. Oh gosh, didn't mean to do that. Phew, got to it in time. Okay, that, no, I'm going to leave that. But these bits, they need a little, a little backup. There we are. And coming off this side as well. Okay, this bit's this bit's all pretty red as well. Look into that a little bit more. Ooh, it's difficult when the tonality turns a corner, which is what's happening here, to figure out exactly what's going on. You have to kind of be bold and hope for the best. Both of those things. Again, not swallowing up too much of the paler areas. Just make it slightly less. Dark, the graduations in tone. Oh, that's too, too heavy. That's better. A bit more dilute. Okay, okay so that's more dilute around there. Okay. Now, out here, wee very red again. Could be a little more, little more slapdash here because there's definitely a lot of red stuff going on out here. Still leaving those veins red though. Oh, sorry, white. And even though it is red, it's not nearly as red down the bottom. There's up the top, which is something I'd already mentioned. Just looking into those colours the whole time, making sure you're being as true to the subject as possible. Okay. Okay. The veins have got some stuff going on. Picking them out just a little bit. So now uh, an oranger. So this is cadmium orange light with a tiny bit of red in it. Just getting these gradations in. These areas of colouring. Going over the other bit that you've done with the same colour, that is a helpful idea as well. But again, don't swallow up all your lights, don't want to do that, absolutely not. down. Now I know that the darker areas are on this side of the leaf, leaving that highlight area of highlight to stand proud. Follow that down. It's quite distinct down there. But I'm wondering, I'm hoping this technique will be suitable wherever you, wherever you live and whatever kind of autumn colours you've got coming at you. Because it's just building up of 
layers and layers of bright, bright colour. And then we're going to put our top wash on that hopefully will knock everything into, into touch. That's the plan anyway. I'm quite liking the effect of it, um, the sort of watery underlayer. I, I, I'm quite enjoying that. I, I, I don't know how accurate it is, but it's quite pretty. Okay, that's all right as well. That goes down like that. And mm, it's very pale at the bottom, but not so pale in amongst here. So let's take our heart in our mouth. Not all the way up there because that's where our area of light is. This is using just a wet brush with just water on, no paint at all. Blending that in a little bit. It's important not to swallow up those pale yellows which are down here by the... Okay, that's all right. Tiny bit more of that yellow up, that orange up there. And then up at this end, definitely a bit more of it. suggestion of colour there. I do want it to be a pale area but it needs to have some definition going on in it as well. So let's use this very pale orange to put in some suggestions of shadow in the midst of the highlight. It's a bit more realistic. Okay. And again, we've got our nice orange corner over here. So, whee crack open the orange and don't worry about it. It's over here. And again, we've got to be careful, don't I, as they come down the edge of the leaf to bear in mind what's happening as you come closer and closer to the base. Is it all pretty orange coming in like this? I'm going to pull these colours in in just a second with a bit of water. Okay. Moments like this, I've still got no idea if this painting of a leaf is going to end up looking rubbish or be successful. It often really does take a very long time until you can double guess what your painting is going to end up as. Now I need to do some top washes. Uh, so I'm going to start with a very pale yellow one, almost just to unite everything. It's going to be yellow with a touch of cadmium orange light in. I'm saying that. What I've just mixed up is cadmium orange light with a touch of yellow. Okay, really, really pale and dilute. <coughs> and I'm going to whap it over everything except for my highlight highlight. So hopefully this will bring the whole thing together to a certain extent. And then again, we'll revisit, come back, and take a look at those, if we need to do anything with the veins, if we need to put more detailing in the central veins, I'm still going to leave white for now, because they've got quite a lot of colour variation going on. But this tip definitely up here can be swallowed up completely. And can you see how around the highlights I'm just not, I ain't going there, not yet anyway. Okay, and this side, <coughs> Sorry, this side can all be whapped in as well. You can see how pale and dilute that is. It's very pale. And even down here, which is some of the palest areas, I'm just diluting it even more. <coughs> it's dried a bit, so now I'm going to put another top layer on, which is going to knock these back more. This is a um, this is cadmium red. And it's, it's a little bit dilute, but it's not that dilute. But I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it being so thick because this entire top area is really very red. It sort of glows. So that's kind of what I'm going for. And then it comes down. Whoa, I didn't want that to happen. Lift, lift, lift. There we go. Phew. Um, comes down and kind of stops here-ish, I guess. Kind of comes around here. There we go. Yeah. Okay, and then again, with a little bit of water, dilute the effect. 
and pull all this out to the edges so that it really is starkly red. I would imagine the details of the veins will show up a little bit better once it dries. Okay, and this similar effect on this bit which is also red. But again, I'm being very careful because we're in amongst near our highlights which is a, a dangerous place to be. We don't want to compromise anything at this late stage. And again, just using the water to soften the edges of the orange overlayer. Following, whenever you paint, try and follow the line of growth. So if the, so for example, with the leaf, I wouldn't want to go like that. I'd want to follow the lines of the veins to sort of respect the growth. So I've now mixed up a bit of very watery dilute pink and it's um, cadmium orange dark mixed with opera pink. Just in the middle of these areas I'm going to put that bit in. Not a lot, just a little bit to give a little bit of structure. And this is really, this is, what the, this is what the leaf does. It just has these areas between the veins. You can bend that out there. The areas between the veins are not um, are slightly pinker than the areas right proximal to the veins, so you need to respect that. So I've done the other half while the, this half is drying, and now it's time to put in the veins which are red. So I'm using a, a dark solid red following them down as boldly as possible. <gasps> don't, want to, don't want to ruin anything at this late stage. So I'm only going to do the main veins, this dark red colour. The other ones really, they kind of blend in with the colour of the leaf blade more. That's one side. The other side with the same very thin dark red line. Okay, that one's going to be drawn in as well. I don't mind cutting off these side veins, that's fine. So this should, in theory, give a little more firm structure to the leaf. Okay, and then we head up here. Which ones are we going to do? We'll just do the main ones. So there's a lateral vein here which we could do with it. And another one here. And this one up here. And then that one. Mm, yeah, probably has to go as well, I'm afraid. Not sure though. Okay, so I've worked into both sides now. Um, now what I'm going to do is a top wash over the whole lot using these, which are Dr. Martin's Hydra's Fine Art Watercolours. And I'm using a mix of Brilliant Cadmium Red and gambe rouge, which is yellow. Very, very dilute because they're way too bright. But hopefully, well, what is it some people say it'll make the painting pop? So I'm going to put this over everything now, even the highlights, the whole darn thing. Okay, I'm going to use it more dilute over the di over the highlights, over the highlights. And heavier out here on the tips and again even at this late stage try and keep looking to see what the leaf is telling you about its structure Make much more dilute coming down here and I know this side is much darker than the other side so I'm going to Slam that in to start with. Very dilute here. That's all right as well. Take that there. And then take that really vibrant colour up to the tips. Each time you cover a bit or draw a bit of the leaf. Redraw with your pencil. 
Use your pencil or your paintbrush? Come on, Lizzie, concentrate. Okay, what's happening on this side? On this side, they're on this. The dark is on this side. Going down to the relevant lane. already drawn. Okay, nearly there. This is not not too shabby. And the other really dark area, strangely, is right down here. The base of these veins. And just one final final wash. Again this is a this is just a a diluted um, um, Dr. Martin's Brilliant, brilliant cadmium red. Can you see? There we are. Ridiculous pink colour, but it's perfect for what I want. Just, just to put a tiny bit. Tiny bit more um, depth into this side here. Can you see it really gives it a kick, doesn't it? And again, blending it in, not compromising the light too much. So that's on that side, and then it's on this side as well, it does the same thing. Blending it in, just diluting it to do that. Going on and again, do you remember what I was saying earlier about the pinks being not right up to the margin? Remains true. So it's layer on layer on layer on layer, observing all the time, color matching as closely as you can all the time. But never taking it too dark, never try never allowing it to get muddy. Hopefully this will look okay. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Should look okay because it's actually true to life. Okay, and then sideways, just very lightly. Here, oopsie. Okay, <clears throat> and on the other side, and Again, I'm not going to fill that in solidly because it's all to do with highlights. So I'll let that stand. I'm now at a stage where I know I'm in danger of overworking it if I don't stop pretty soon. This vein here. 
And again, lightest of touches as you come into the space where the highlight was. Ooh, down. A little bit of, a little bit of this. I think that'll probably have to do. So there we go. There it is, and there's the leaf itself. I'll take a photo, put them next to each other. Uh, oh, um. Now all you can see is... <laughs> Well, you can see it's a shadow of the of the film, um, but there you go. So that's that's finished. Hopefully, it's um, hopefully it's been of some use. I'll put a still of it at the end so you can see what it looks like. Okay, thanks very very much for taking the time. Hopefully, it was of some use to you guys. Thank you. Bye. Till next time.